thank you for inviting me onto the show. Um, appreciate the invite. So, first topic um, is what is our thoughts on Leicester City uh, this season? It's been an up and down season. I think that we all know that it's not been the best of times this season for us. Losing back to back games throughout the season, getting one run of about six or seven games winning. It just really isn't what we expected. Like I say, we, we weren't expecting top eight, a top eight, but we weren't we weren't expecting to be down in the bottom three or in a relegation battle as such. But a lot of the things have gone to the reason why we've been into this position. Obviously the transfer window uh, wasn't the greatest for us. We couldn't bring anyone in uh, and we let Fafana go, one of our best centre-backs go. Um, we had a situation where okay, we couldn't bring anyone in, like I said. The uh, club didn't give us any money. Rogers didn't want, couldn't bring anyone in to replace squad or refresh the squad at all. And then we lost a few of the background staff who was instrumental in getting some new players in the door and even the fitness guy, we lost him a few years back and it was never we've never been the same since of injuries. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. And with the, with the fixtures we've got left, I'm hoping we can stay up. Um, and then Everton, realistically, do they stay up? I'm not too sure with the fixtures they've got left, but it's not looking good for both of us at the moment. Uh, the for, thoughts on the uh, Dean, Dean Smith um, appointment? I was more happy with um, JT. Uh, well, John Terry and Cleric Shakespeare, Craig Shakespeare coming in. I think both of them are the more important side of the the appointments. Dean Smith isn't really a tactician man, is he? He just gets he's a man manager and he gets the team going again, and that's what we needed at the moment because obviously R- R- Brendan Rodgers really was not doing anything well for us. So I'm glad that Dean Smith's coming in and kind of give it, give the team a boost because the last two games we've not lost. So I'm happy to see where we are right now and looking forward. It looks like positive, I guess. If we don't stay up, then we've done all we can. I'm glad that we brought any brought in for eight games. Eight games was the best thing to do for us. We didn't want to get anyone in the long term um, because it could we could be in the it could be in the championship by then, and we probably want to bring in a different manager if that. Or again, if all but if we were in the Premier League, we would bring probably somebody more known for staying up in the Premier League. So that would be the situation. Force on Everton season. Um I don't know, you know, obviously Sean Dyke just coming in before it changed around things in the thought you were safe, but the last few games you've not been looking that promising, have you? And obviously the start of the season we all know it wasn't the best of the best of sides for you. But we again, we, I like I say with Leicester, we both didn't think we'd be in the bottom three or four or even five coming to the end of the season, and we are. So you've got to see it in a positive light and say that you've just got to do it yourselves. Now we've said that we've got to put this on our, it's in our own hands to stay up. Well, see, it's the same with you. I'm not sure what fixtures you've got left to go, but I hope Sean Dutch can do what he needs to do and to keep you up because we we we're both decent enough sides and be decent enough clubs to be in the Premier League and we're not the likes of Southampton who for, for me have been struggling the last what t- five or six years to be in the Premier League so both of both teams have been um what's the word both teams have been very underwhelming this season and I think we both are good enough to stay up we just need to prove it um in the last five games Short thoughts on Sean Dice. Obviously, I just a point. Uh, Push alluded to it that he started well. He obviously, he, he only got one in five losses, uh, and he got quite a few wins under the belt. But then, since then, he's kind of lost track of it, I guess. And maybe that's because you're playing a lot more difficult teams. But he came in and beat Arsenal on, on his first game for Everton, so you can't really deny how well he's done. But it's it's more to the point of can he keep you up? And we all know Sean Dyche is that sort of manager to do that. So maybe it was the right appointment. Everyone, every Leicester fan was saying we should have got Sean Dyche before he went to you, but Rogers was not gone by then. So you've just got to look on the bright side and say that it was a good appointment, but is it enough to keep you up? And at the moment, it doesn't look like it. 
Best player for Leicester City? Uh, we all know that's probably going to be the answer is James Madison. People are going to say Harvey Barnes because of the stats and what he's racked up this season, but I've not rated Harvey Barnes one bit this season. He's not performed well on the pitch. Yes, he's scoring goals, but I'd rather see a player who does well and shows up on every single game than just be naff most games and just get a few goals here and there. Um, so for me, Madison has to be that, the best player of the season. Has to be. He's, he's, I think he's dropped off form a tiny bit this season in the last few games, but I think that's because obviously Brendan Rodgers has gone and he's trying to play in a new style of football. Um, but I still think he's been our best player and I think we are going to lose him at the end of the season, which is not like awful to hear because we all know he's maybe a bit too good for us now, but he is definitely one major reason why we will stay up if we do stay up. Um, so that's why he is our best player this season. Worst player this season, I'm going to call out Jamie Vardy. He, yes, he's getting older. He's, what, 37 nearly. He's just scored another goal now to get it two, two goals this season in the Premier League compared to his, what, 15 last season. We all know he still has got something in him. As much as I want to deny that and say that he, I feel like he's done for now. He's he's not the player we all know, know and love. But for me, he's not done anything near, anywhere near what he is capable of. We all know he's probably a world-class striker. But he, he was anyway, and now he looks like he's slowly dropping off. He's not going to get. He's not going to be a striker that gets 20, 25 goals in a season now. So I think he has to be named our worst player this season. You probably you could probably put the likes of Vestergaard in or Bertrand, but I'm picking out players who have played in the team most of the season or have been playing appearance-wise plus 15, 10, 15 games and shown that it's just not good enough. Um, so for, for me, Vardy has to be in that worst player for us this season. Danger man for Leicester, I'm going to call it out. Daka, I'm going to do it. People hate me for saying it, but... Barnes is just not good enough. Maybe he will score against you, maybe not. But for me, Dak is probably our most our biggest threat. Kelechi Inacho was the biggest threat for us, but he's injured now, which is the biggest issue. He probably would have been my starting striker uh, for the rest of the season. But now he's out um, for the majority of the season. Now he's gonna, it's going to be Dak for me. If you don't, if you don't stop him over the over the over the top, then he's going to get get some attacks on you, he's going to get some shots on you, so for me, Dak is the man to look out for, uh, Tete's not good enough, uh, Barnes isn't good enough for me, maybe you look out for Madison, but then again, your defence is quite strong at the moment, isn't it, obviously Keane, um, is it Holgate, I'm not too, too sure, but your defence is a lot stronger now with Sean Dyche in charge than it has been with any other, any other manager in charge. Worst player for Danger Man, sorry, for Everton. Um, I think we're all going to have to say it's Damari Gray, isn't it? I don't know if he's fit or not, but we all know what he can do now. He's not in the lesser side. He wasn't all, wasn't great for us, but now he's in that Everton side. We all know what he can do against us. He'll just show up because it's Leicester City. And the only other player I can think of that's a danger man for you is probably Onana. Obviously, I've rated him really highly in the midfield this season. He's been one of the young talents that's come in. And who's, I wouldn't say a threat, but he's, he's a, he is a brilliant player. And he used to be that, he's, he's like that Indeedy player that we used to have a few years ago. Uh, not not as such now, but when we when you know he could just hold the ball up and just make them tackles that you know no one else can. He is the man that we need to watch out for because we need to get past him in midfield if we want to get and score goals. So, for me, your danger man are probably um, Gray and Onana. Likely lineup. So, my team or your team is is different. I, I probably would go for a more of a narrow formation in the likes of a 4 and 2 and 2 narrow because we've not got any wingers uh, who is really that decent at the moment. So, I would drop the two wingers and go into a two striker formation. So for me, it would be Iverson in goal. Um, it would be um, Christiansen on the left, Castagna on the right, and then in the, in the defence you've got Sunchu and Thais. 
And then you've got in the midfield, I've gone for Sumari in the CDM position. Uh, left central attacking mid, oh sorry, left centre mid, I've gone for Yuri Tillemans. Right, I've gone Pratt. In that camera, we all know it's James Madison. And then in the strikers, I'm going to put Vardy and Dakar up front. We've got no Kelechi and Inacho, so we're going to have to go all out attack uh, with the two strikers we've got. Um, I, I, If I had to say what the team would be from the club's point of view, they would play Barnes and Tete and play Dakar or Vardy up front. We know he's going to go 4-3-3, four, 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 three, three, but that what I've said... Uh, in the 4 2 2 style is my own team and what I want to see play because I think it's our best chance to get any goals and the best chance to stay in the game for most games this season. Um, score prediction, I'm going to go for 2-1 Leicester. We've, we've backed ourselves in the last couple of home games and we've done well in the last couple of home games to say that we beat Wolves and the game before that we didn't, well, we didn't do too well uh, against Bournemouth. But... We've got to be positive and we've got to go for a win. Uh, it's going to be a hard game because both teams are going to be up for it. You need the points just as much as us. And then we've got who will win the league. Um, I've wanted Arsenal to win the league, but now they lost the big game at Man City. I think it's all Man City. Man City's to lose now. I think if they win every single, every single game this season... They've won it. They've done it. So I think Man City are going to win the league, but I did want Arsenal to win the league because of how well they did with this season. Um, and then the last question, as always, we're on a random question. What is your go-to takeaway order? So obviously in front of the football, you can't not have a takeaway pizza. Um, but on a normal night that's not football, I'd probably choose a Chinese, I guess. I can't beat a bit of duck, can you? A bit of duck pancakes, you can't beat that. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fan of Indian Indian takeaways. Um, but yeah, pizza for football, of course, and Chinese on a normal normal night in the week if you do fancy a cheeky takeaway. But yeah, appreciate you coming. Appreciate the invite, guys. Um, hopefully, this has been decent enough, and we'll catch you hopefully next season when we play from the Premier League. See you in a bit.